Good job, Kuma. Hi, I'm Stefano and welcome to Rikai Bonsai, a place to learn bonsai from the ground up. Today I'm following Yella's tutorial on roots of a rock to make a Chinese elm forest. I've bought this Eiryu rock more than a year ago when I took some cuttings of my Chinese elm, Ulmus parviflora. Now that they are mature enough, it's finally time to proceed. The idea is to arrange them on the rock close to where I'm putting them on the table, around what looks like a little valley or a lake. I prepared aside some raffia, cocoa choir, tin foil, some soil, for light molar clay and cocoa choir in equal parts, and a training pot. Then I started exposing the roots of the cuttings. Elms are indeed vigorous growers and these cuttings already have some branching and were pruned a couple of weeks before shooting this video. In theory they should also have good roots, but you'll never know until you check. Certainly have to be careful not to disturb them more than necessary since the repotting season is well over. Luckily it turns out that all the cuttings have enough roots, so I can wash off the remaining dirt and keep them in water until it's time to anchor them to the rock. Because obviously I decided to work on this project the evening before the hottest day ever recorded in the UK. Borrowing a term from woodworking, it's now time for a dry fit test before continuing. I wonder whether I should give a gently windswept style to the composition or not. I could also fan out the cuttings as is customary with forests, but I don't think it suits the rock. For sure the five cuttings will crown the little depression on top. Actually watching this footage again I wish I had arranged them more unevenly for a more natural look. Anyway the end result should look more or less like this. Now the tricky part. Each tree goes through a three parts process, the first of which is securing it to the rock. Once I identify the spot where to place a plant, I use a, a thread of raffia to tie it in position. At this stage, don't bother arranging the roots, we will address this problem next. Just anchor the plant securely where it contributes best to the desired design. Tying a single tree is relatively easy. Tying several trees to the same rock, as in my case, is more complex because in the process we might displace the trees that are already on the rock. Also, complete all the three steps on a tree before moving to the next one, or we might dry the roots and kill the cutting. Be patient and focus on a tree at a time, one step at a time. The second step is arranging the roots. With the tree firmly in position, I use my finger or a root rake to dispose the roots along the grooves of the rock as neatly as possible, or over the rock if there are no cracks in a given spot. Just make sure that they stay as close as possible to the rock, they will wrap it and give a better look to the bonsai as they grow. The third and last step for each tree is covering the roots with wet cocoa wire. Remember, if the putty is too dry, it won't stick to the rock. If it is too watery, it will wash away. Cover all the roots and all the grooves, even the parts with no roots, to make sure that they will have a path to grow down toward the soil. Now let's repeat these three steps on the other cuttings. I'll see you at the end of the sequence.
This passage is probably the simplest but also the most peculiar of all. Once placed the cutting roots on the rock and covered them with soil, it's important to make them grow around the rock. Previously, I placed the wire also into the empty cracks of the rock as it helps anti-seeing new roots to grow there. Now, I jacket the rock in tin foil so that the roots continue to grow down before expanding into the surrounding soil of its future pot. Finally, I use a string of raffia to secure the tin foil to the rock so that it doesn't get loose and let the roots escape the pot. Potting the tinfoil jacket rock is mostly regular business. After placing a draining mesh at the bottom of a draining pot for retaining soil, I pour some into the pot up to two thirds of its height, forming a little mound in the center. This soil is a mix in equal parts of perlite, molar clay and cocoa wire. I initially intended to replicate Nitro's recipe, but not finding turface that doesn't melt in too much here in the UK, I replaced it with old school cat litter, which absorbs water well, but keeps the shape. Then I realized that I would not be able to water as much as I should this fast draining soil when it were, so I increased the amount of fur bark first, then eventually swapped it for cocoa wire for good. Anyway, sit the rock on the mound, making sure that the trees are all positioned right. Then surround the rock with more soil and push it down, Shake the pot and bang on it to fill any air gaps because otherwise they might create space for the roots to go in the wrong direction. Oh, by the way, apologies for the background noise. At the time of shooting this, our neighbors were throwing a party on the deck next door. At least it seems they were also having fun. Now that the cuttings and the rock are in place in the training pot, it's time to give them some water. And this video becomes more and more ASMR as we get closer to its end. The water collects in the depression on the rock, giving life to the suggestion of a mountain lake. Unfortunately, anyway, it flows away soon after. So I ended up making a valley out of it by adding some spare moss. There you have it! Have a look while I put up a blank screen to better bring out the details of the composition. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I for sure thank Yelly again for his instructions. I'm Stefano, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.